Welcome to HTC Invitational. I'm your host, Nimsh. I am joined here by my co-host, Monk. How are you doing, man? I believe you're muted, Monk. Not here, where Hyped actually roped out of a win and gave his opponent that win. Fortunately for Hype, though, he was able to take it back in the Handlock versus Green Patron Warrior, and he actually moves on to the uh, to the semifinals against Forsen. Kind of an unlikely duel in the semifinals, but you know one of them will make to the finals and have his first chance to win a tournament. Oh yeah, so we already have Forsen and Hyped in the sem uh, semifinals, but the next match will be Tides of Time versus RDU, and uh, after that, Strife Crew versus Trump. So we are going to have all the matches today, and I want to remind you guys, we are playing HTC Invitational. Round of 16 was yes yesterday. Today we had eight players remaining. We're going to play all the matches till the final, with the final included. Uh, players are playing best of five um, matches, single elimination. Whoever wins advances, whoever loses is eliminated in a conquest format. And we do have a giveaway for you as well. Monk, can you tell us more about the giveaway? Of course, in this giveaway, all you have to do, very simply, is tweet the hashtag HTC Esports, and you can win one of 12 team t-shirts by um, Team Liquid, Cloud9, or TSM, or you can win one of the, maybe one of the better prizes, one of two HTC tablets that you can play Hearthstone on, or one HTC smartphone that you can also play Hearthstone on. That's pretty amazing, Monk. And uh, let's talk about our players. So we have Tides of Time versus RDU. What do we know about those guys? Yeah, both players, they're kind of like two of the very best players in 2014. Uh, together, they pretty much won like 50% of all the tournaments, especially RDU, who had kind of an insane run in 2014. And 2015, they haven't done nearly as well. But you know what? Tides, he won his first tournament in 2015 recently in the Kingwin 4 Charity Easter Edition. And RDU, he actually made two finals in a row with the Xfinity Hearthstone Tournament and the Amazon Black Rock Mountain Tournament. So both of these players, although they haven't that, had that much success in 2015, they've done slightly better um, re more recently in the last month or two. Oh yeah, both players are excellent. Where Tides of Time is mostly a deck builder. He's bringing specific brews. And for this tournament, he brought a Volcanic Dragon Hunter Volcanic Dragon Warrior and a Volcanic Dragon... No, wait. It's a Murloc Warlock. Um, yes. Where RDU is actually bringing some interesting decks as well. He is a fine tuner, but he did bring the uh, Agro Paladin. What's up with that deck? Yeah, I want to see that list eventually, but I guess we're going to see it after the tournament ends. It has some really interesting cards. Two, uh, two Blessing of... Uh, Kings, I believe. It has like Cog Hammer. It has Argent Squire. Just a very Avenging interesting Wrath. crew. Yeah, even Avenging Wrath, exactly. And we don't even see Consecrate, or uh, rather, we don't even see Equality. There is Consecrate even, so it's not a purely aggro paladin. It's seemingly aggro slash mid range, but we're getting into the first game, and it's going to be Murloc Warlock. Even with the Grimscale Oracle? Oh my god, that card. We never see that card, even in Murloc decks. No, we've seen it some sometimes. Like I personally like the card, but uh, yeah, it is surprising. And he is running that so far. It looks basically like two years ago, Hearthstone beta, old times. So it's old school versus new school. It's Warlock Murloc versus Mech Mage. Oh, what a great draw from Tide's time! Just drawing into all his Murlocs, and you know what? Murloc, Warlock, uh, bet you can't say that three times fast, but Murloc, Warlock, <laughs> it's actually a deck that kind of snowballs pretty well. And you know what? Mech Mage isn't a deck that deals with snowball snowballing decks very well. So oh, man. this Power might be of one the of those priestess. opportunities. Yeah, exactly. This might be one of those situations where the snowball from time to time just overtakes the Mech Mage. Yeah, it's like, how do you return from this situation being a, being a mech mage after seeing that war leader? Imagine if Soulfire will be for zero mana. That was the situation two years ago. Same situation, but you were soul firing that minion. That's why it, it got nerfed. But still, uh, this board here is amazing anyway. And protecting that war leader is very important. Denying the mech as well. Yeah, and now... RDU is just so confused as to what to do. <laughs> do you think he, he didn't practice this matchup enough? Uh, 
I mean, Nylum is one of those teams that practices the most within the team. Uh, but I doubt anyone on Nylum, especially Life Coach, is playing Murloc Warlock. Like, I'm, I I can only imagine what's going through Ardu's head right now. He is uh, he's thinking, this Warlock deck looks really fishy. Oh, man. Just, how I've missed these jokes. You, don't, you, you haven't, <laughs> That was your first joke today. But yeah, yeah I'm it getting... was a good one. And, and you know what? This game, uh, I think this game is just over. Yep, that's it. And uh, we mentioned I'm... it yesterday. Uh, Murloc deck might seem unstable somehow. Uh, and oh, sometimes my God. With double oh war leader. This is massive. This is it. Right here, right now. Murloc Warlock. Murloc Warlock. I, I love Murloc how, Warlock. I love how, said it's three yeah, times. I love how uh, RDU is still taking notes after this game ends. He's like, okay, I lost to the Murloc Warlock deck. Yeah. I believe that, he just that's noted I got wrecked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, now uh, the two decks that remain for Tons of Time are the Volcanic Drake decks. What am I even saying? Like, But it's actually true. He's running the. His own warrior brew with Volcanic Drake, with Revenge, I believe, with Craptor and Chromagus. We are going to see it right now. And uh, Revenge already in his hand. Monk, do you remember what the card does? Because a lot of players, there are not uh, viewers, are not uh, aware what a card is actually doing. Uh, well, it's a two mana card that's basically a whirlwind. But yeah. if you're under twelve 15. health, I believe it is fifteen, 15? or twelve. Okay, might be fifteen. Uh, okay, I'm pretty sure it's fifteen then. If it's 15 or below, if you're at 15 or below health, then the card actually does two damage whirlwind effect. Isn't that free? I, I think it's free oh, damage it three? actually. Okay. Yeah, it's like sure. we are even yeah, not sure. Yeah, it is three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just a card like nobody plays. When it was first announced, I don't think anyone was like, "Hey, this is a card that I'm gonna be playing all the time in my decks." Yep, but Tides of Time is actually bringing this card, and uh, we've mentioned it, that he is a Warrior deck builder next to Kit Kats. He was innovating a lot with regards to Warrior. Uh, right now, he's so confident in his play that he basically left, uh, so he is not even sitting. He doesn't consider Mech Mage a threat, I believe. What do you think about that? What? No, I don't know. I don't know about that, because Mech Mage is always a threat. It can always just get insane starts all the time especially with this snow chugger double uh neutron opening um it can actually get very threatening all right so there's a couple of questions what to play this turn is tides of time going to return in time before he's getting roped if he ropes will it strongly influence the match what is are you thinking okay he, i think he just got a hot pocket or something but uh yeah he Quickly comes back, equips the uh, fire where and attacks, and the turn. RD is probably like, you took that long to make that play, really? But, oh my God. <laughs> well, this is one of the ways to confuse your opponent, that's for sure. Oh, Mech Warper, by the way, that's a pretty nice card to get, especially protected by Anoyatron. Uh, especially just having so many mechs in your hand. I think the, the Mech Warper is almost guaranteed to survive, unless like a Whirlwind is drawn. Yeah. And then, like, just so many, like, all the mechs will come down in the next turn, almost. You do have to be worried about Brawl, right? Maybe Brawl will not hit you on 4, but then on 5. So, on the other hand, you also do not have a way to deal with the Sacralite of Pain in one in one hit. Like, you want to, you don't want to give Warrior cards. Yeah, there's actually no way to deal with that Acolyte uh, efficiently. I think though you at this point you can't play around um you can't play around brawl because oh there is the first you can't play around Drake. brawl because you have so many minions in your hand but they're all rather weak minions that don't do too much damage so you just have to just hope that these minions can add up over time and your opponent doesn't have the brawl oh and there is oh. the brawl so it might be so devastating. Brawl into Volcanic Drake on 5. This is going to happen. Monk, this is this is actually possible. That's, that's pretty sick. And you know what? That might be a tell. Armoring up, not using um, this Charge of Fire War Axe. Are you, are you definitely looks very confused. Kevin, are you seriously saying that not using Fire War Axe is a tell that there is a Volcanic Drake in hand? 
Well, it's at least to tell that there's a brawl in the hand, right? I can fix anything. Oh. My oh. God. Okay, so one one of those minions is going to survive. So volcanic drake is still going to cost four. Um, no, like five. No, wait, one. I mean, it'll cost one. So it's it was quite it unfortunate. Cost one. He won't get to play it. But yeah, I, that's probably like the best brawl he's ever gonna get in this game. What survives? Anoyatron. And he gets Mirror Entity. This is so bad for RDU. He's out of options, out of steam with a single mech. Something like a Blast Mage here would be amazing, but he didn't get it. Harrison Jones is perfect counter for Blinktron if RDU plays one. I don't believe so. Yeah, if uh, Tides of Time ever faces Hyped, I guess he'll have a counter to that Blinktron. True. Tides of Time can just relax now, just eat his sandwich, you know. Tides boys. RDU needs Dr. Boom. Uh, maybe not this turn, but Pyro Shooter is nice. Drawing into Boom on 7 will be good. And there is still that Mirror Entity, uh, which might be annoying because there is actually no small minion. Yeah, but you know what? He can he can just uh, execute something on the later turn, and that's still pretty good. Oh, oh he's, he's getting a Shield, shield. Slam. Yeah, even if he plays like an Emperor Thorzan, for example, he can uh, just you know, use, in a later turn, he can use the Death Spite, the second charge of the Death Spite, rather, and yeah. then execute uh, whatever minion that he plays. So I definitely expect that to be coming down in a future turn. And now he also denied the mech. There is a Water Elemental for RDU. So there is a possibility of Blink Tron with Water Elementals. Yeah, definitely true. But it might just be a tech against uh, the warriors and the hunters that we see a lot these days. That would certainly make sense. So there is another shield slam, but not enough armor. A mirror entity is still the thing. He can't really attack, so a pretty good frostbolt from RDU, but he's out of cards and out of options. Um, you can consider overriding this death spite and then executing here. Yeah, I think it's actually... It's actually fine. You can also um... shield slam execute. Okay, that's interesting. Well, you you make um, death spite will be online next turn. Yeah. So instead of losing it, you just uh, you're just spending shield slam instead. Yeah, you also have an answer to BGH anyway, or you either you have the answer of BGH to a, your opponent's Doctor Boom. And with uh, Archmage, Antonidas probably isn't that threatening anyway. Oh, he goes for BGH now. So if RDU picks up Dr. Boom, that would be an amazing card. Uh, he gets a Frostbolt, though. Tough. It's so like, once again, do you Frostbolt the face? I don't think there is a reason now. Um, because if you get Antonidas, you will want to have that Frostbolt. You need it. Uh, and it, yeah. if you Frostbolt now, it doesn't achieve much. Yeah, it's a great point. Oh wow, there is a dragon oh. hand, so Blackwing Raptor. This looks really tough for RDU. Great for tides. Wow, a second mirror entity monk. RDU is getting the worst possible draws here. Oh wow, he's is he gonna play the control game at this point? I guess yes he is. Not much he can do, and Tice can just go for Torison. He can play whatever and attack into... Oh, alright, not Chromagus. But whatever he wants and then um, kill it with Death Spy. Oh, and you know what? This is, um, this is pretty cool, because you can play Harrison, kill his opponent's Harrison, and then play Volcanic Drake. Wow, yep. We're going to see that Drake here. Artie needs Dr. Boom right now. And oh, he gets wow. it. <laughs> well, you just called it there. Yeah, I did. So do you ping your own bomb to kill Volcanic Drake? <laughs> he goes for it, I it's believe. It's certainly a possibility. Oh, uh, well. Not enough. I was correct, but... Not so sex successful. So now the only threat left for RDU, possibly, is Antonidas. Maybe he's running Ragnaros. Maybe he's running that Blinktron. So, 
the real question here is, how many cars does Tides of Time want? And which car does he want double of? Something like double Shield Maiden, double Shield Block would just be insane. To be honest, like anything. Double Nefarian is pretty good. Of course. You play Nefarian? Do you actually get, uh, oh, Revenge. Oh, so oh it's 12 God, health. Okay, That's a lot of revenge from Tides. Uh, from Tides. Casting Tides after Tides is so difficult. Oh, you can just say the same thing uh, after every game. I guess that's what I do. Kind of. <laughs> you know what? We might actually end up um, with a Tides. No, wait. Hyped one. Ties, so Tides Tides got eliminated. Okay. Exactly. Tides so, yeah, versus Tides final would be uh, the most uh, amazing and, and annoying thing at the same time. I'm sure it'll happen sometime. I don't think it ac actually has happened in a tournament yet, but eventually. Alright, so here Tides of Time just extending his lead. Um, already with a simple reversing switch. If he will not be able to use reversing switch as a, um, let's say, Tides of Time is going to win, and then RDU is going to use reversing switch to switch the game state so that he won instead of Tides. If it doesn't work that way, then I don't see a good chance for him to win. Yeah, and unfortunately for RDU, he goes down yet again to one of Tides of Time's signature decks that he built specifically for this tournament. That's true. So right now, Tides of Time has a Volcanic Drake Hunter, which is kind of like a mid-range hunter, uh, left in his arsenal. And RDU still has his um, Mech Mage and two other decks, um, which is the Agro Paladin. And the, the third one is, uh, I believe, the mid-range hunter, or like the hybrid mid-range. So still fighting with that Mech Mage, trying to get that one win with the deck. Eventually, he has to win at least one game. Who do you think is an edge here? Mech Mage or the Midrange Hybrid Hunter with Volcanic Drakes? Oh, to be honest, I have no idea. Uh, like, the Volcanic Drakes, I'm not sure what it adds, to, to, to be honest. I guess it doesn't really combo well with the Explosive Trap, so it's basically the Unleash the Hounds, right? I guess yeah. that's kind of a combo. Um, Unleash the Hounds or, like, Hunter Creepers. Yeah. Basically, but whenever I would, I would say that like the volcanic drakes, they don't seem to be that good against the mech mage because, um, like, I guess they can just kill it off very easily with a simple frostbolt plus ping. Yeah, but then again, that's uh, you know, if you play it, for, if you play it cheaply, let's say for free mana six four, and then you force mage to do something with it, um, it might be troublesome. Here. Yeah. Double Eagle, and Ho Eagle Horbo. The problem that Tides of Time is facing now is that he knows the mirror entity is somewhere there because of the Mad Scientist. So if he kills this Mad Scientist, he won't be able to play Power to Shredder next turn. Oh wow, very heads up play here. He's setting up for the Explosive Trap. And it's going to certainly be like one of the best Explosive Traps I've ever seen. Not only does the Explosive Trap pretty much kill all these minions, but also, uh, nice RDU is not going to... Yeah, it's not going to get value off this uh, mirror entity, or off this mad scientist. Only one secret will be gotten from uh, RDU. Yeah, that's true. And not, not only that, Ties of Time draws into um, Unleash the Hounds, so it's yet another answer to the mass minions that RDU might have. So if RDU decides not to attack here, is there any reason not to attack? Like, there are no buffs in this deck, so you have to attack. Alright, he procs the Explosive Trap, Ties of Time gets, in, get, gets one more durability in the weapon. Yeah, but now he has Freezing Trap. Yeah. <laughs> this is looking ugly, and Animal Companion, if he wants to, but he doesn't have to, he can just uh, get the Freezing Trap right there. Oh my god, everything's going so poorly for RDU. It's just a perfect storm of things going badly for him. There is a Blast Mage and some mechs. If he plays a minion, the minion is just going to die to, to the weapon attack. Yeah, he can actually... Um... Oh, yeah, can a Hunter Creeper is actually going to get copied. Exactly. So he can go for Hunter Creeper, attack into Hunter Creeper, then unleash. Yeah, it seems like a really good play. 
you basically you, the, like your opponent isn't gonna have any more minions after that to proc the freezing trap, so you basically lock that out. And oh, he's actually considering the pilot shredder here. And that's developing okay. the board quite nicely. Yeah, so I think with this play, he's thinking, um, I want to get more value off the Unleash the Hounds in future turns. And he's certainly setting up for it. Is he going to simulate a snake trap? What would be the move to show, like, hey, I have a snake trap? Um, I don't know. I, I think... This is almost certainly a freezing trap. You've kind of bluffed it, and I think Ardio at this point is kind of convinced that it's a it's a freezing trap. Now he's certain. So I know you're trying into blast mage. Might be interesting. There is still the spider, the shredder, a bit threatening. Oh wow! So he won't be able to kill the pilot shredder. He's just going for some board control. I'll leave the hounds. Seems like a pretty good draw. Yeah, with this he should be able to clear, uh, or like almost clear. I'll leave the hounds first. Uh, kill the Anatron, then attack the five four with the pilot to shredder. Um, attack water elemental with one of the dogs. Kill commands water elemental. I imagine if uh, ties of time gets flame tongue totem or direwolf alpha off his pilot shredder. Oh yeah, pretty then he amazing. doesn't even have to kill commands. Or does he? Yeah, he will still have to. Well, uh, not with Flame Tongue Totem, but yeah, with Dire Wolf Alpha, he would also still need to do that. Oh, that's interesting. He might also go for face because, you know, this is uh, six points of damage here, uh, plus um, eight total. Then his opponent is a 10. And you possibly have eight on board. Uh, are you dead to Fireball, though? Yeah, I, I don't like going for face here, uh, mostly because there's a Water Elemental on the board, and yeah. you do have a lot of burst with your Ego and Horn Bow, but as long as the Water Elemental lives, um, the, we actually just don't have that burst. That's one dead card. Yeah, that's true. Alright, you still go for face with one dog at least. There is a Fireball. So deny the beast, go for face, one damage. And then uh, how much damage will uh, R do you have next turn? Six plus six, 12, not enough. Uh, he, will, he will need another fireball. Um, for tides here, he can just slam the high main. Um, juggler high main, I think is fine. Yeah, and you can even juggler attack high main? I like just attacking one of the... Uh... The one ones that come off the spectral spider, or just like the spectral or the haunted creeper itself, because that uh, pretty much threatens the Lotheb with a five two Armani berserker, and it pretty much forces your opponent to either fireball or frostbolt it. True, because he will not be able to play the berserker and the juggler at the same time using yeah. the ping. It's also possible that the knife will actually land there. Um, I think I would have attacked the creeper if the juggle hit the creeper and attacked one of the spectral spiders i mean but if you attack the creeper now with your berserker you actually give your opponent more power quickly yeah so maybe the correct sequence was attack into the one one then play the juggler and play the high main give yourself a bigger chance yeah. to hit one of the spectral spiders yeah i kind of like that a bit better but it's still all right uh, so now it will be uh, Clockwork Gnome and Tinker Town Technician. Is is he dead though? Ready. If he goes for this. Something needs tinkering? Oh, time rewinder. Um, um, not really doing much here at, uh, for now, but maybe time rewinding Lothab will have some will, will make some sense. All right, so you're staring at at least nine, eleven points of damage from uh, if you kill the um, the troll. Yeah, eleven um, points of damage. Yeah. If you kill the troll, I think you actually might trade your Lotheb into the knife juggler because it's actually really hard for a hunter to deal one damage to things unless yeah. Tide's time draws to unleash the hounds. 
Because going for face is also face. setting up lethal next turn. And uh, you hope that there is nothing that kills you here. Alright, so uh, Ties of Time has to trade. If he doesn't trade, he's dead. Yeah, he has to make some pretty awkward trades as well. Training on the high main into the low feb. Oh, he, then he's getting two knives as well. Yeah. Oh, that That's, was... Uh... That was okay, I guess. Yeah, I think that ended up actually fairly well for him. Um, True. He clears off most of the board. Also, he he's, uh, has to clear the mech. Just to deny the Blast Mage, I believe. Unless so. he decides that um, there is not enough damage. Like, he needs to, to finish the game as fast as possible uh, before the burn is being drawn. So what can mech do here? Uh, if there is a Blast Mage, there, there was one Blast Mage already, so maybe you are yeah. not playing around the second one. Yeah, a mm. second Fireball would be a win. Uh, Frostbolt mm. would also be a win. Quickly. So how much damage is on board? Six damage, so uh, Tides of Time will be looking at 11 damage on the next turn. So I actually do think you uh, attack into the, the block, Clockwork Gnome. Because attacking yeah. face actually wouldn't change anything. He would still need to draw into damage. Oh wow, there is Dr. Boom. So now with 5 plus 6... Well, that's actually a ping as well. So let's say uh, RDU pings the, the Leper Gnome. It's going down to 13. And there is 6, 9, I, 4 damage I don't missing. Think, I don't think ping the Leper Gnome actually changes anything. Because it's going to do 2 damage to you either way. I actually think maybe you actually reversing switch the um, the leper gnome just to give it one less attack. Um, what do you think about pinging face then as well? M maybe pinging face makes yeah. sense. Yeah, pinging face might also make sense, but you're basically but with pinging face you're playing around. What to do? Yeah, I, I, I think pinging face is actually perfectly okay. You try to give um, yourself what? a chance if the bombs are badly uh, like with bad bombs. Like, let's say one yeah. bomb hits face for one, you will have lethal with the fireball thing. Yeah, I guess what, um, I guess ping the leper gnome, um, yeah, there's nothing he can do at this point. I guess ping the leper gnome, had, he gave him a better chance for bombs to hit something, and also give him, uh, like, for example, if Tides of Time had, like, an abusive sergeant, he would have been able to clear the board, whereas if he didn't, then he wouldn't have been able to clear. I don't yeah. think it ended up mattering too much, to be honest, though, and... RDU, he puts one game onto the scoreboard, and it's actually going to be a match. Yeah, that's true. So, um, Tide's still leading 2-1, two -two but RDU is holding fast, and, uh, you know, he still has a chance, like, winning versus Hunter um, two times. He still has Agro Paladin, and his last deck is what, like, a Green Patron Warrior? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I definitely right. want to see this Agro Paladin versus this uh, Volcanic Drake Hunter. It seems to be... Fairly interesting matchup, I would say. But, oh, it's uh, a hunter. Midrange hunter versus midrange hunter. Hunt you yeah. Down. Yeah, no but yeah, from our... as you mentioned, Paladin versus the Volcanic Drake Hunter, I think it, it favors the Volcanic Drake Hunter. Paladin has a lot of minions that die really fast. Yeah, it's true. Especially the type of Paladin that RDU is running with so many, um, I guess, weak minions like Abusive Sergeant and Argent Squire. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So both players having decent hands. Uh, are you having an amazing curve with Mad Scientist, Animal Companion, Powder Shredder? And Tides of Time just um, having the Juggler, Freezing Trap, and uh, Animal Companion as well. What do you think is key in this matchup? Are those uh, are the traps key? Like having an Explosive Trap, or is it more about who's playing the first high main? Yeah, a lot of it is about pr playing the first high main, but at the same time, if you play a high main into a board that has like four creatures and you're at low health, that's not going to matter. I think a lot of it uh, is about getting board control. That's probably the most important part, not falling too far behind. Mm -hmm. I certainly agree with that. So here there is a question. What do you do if you attack and you enable one of the traps? Uh, what traps do you have in your deck? Do you have? We've seen Explosive Trap for sure. We're seeing Freezing Trap right now. Maybe... Do you want to set up a Freezing Trap to get that Cement Scientist? 
Or do you prefer um, to get some... Um, see what trap you get and then play a minion or a trap? I think the problem here is... I think you... The thing is, Tides is thinking he definitely wants a trap because... Um, especially a freezing trap because if he doesn't get a trap then if he plays Animal Companion and he rolls a Huffer this bad scientist is going to get too good of a trade from RDU. But, okay. All right, so you get the explosive set. trap, set up the freezing. So I wonder what the trap this is. It's going to be, oh wow, snake trap. Snake trap. So all three uh, main hunter traps we're going to see in this game. No snipe. No you, snipe. You know, Snipe I've actually seen in tournament play recently, and a lot of via game qualifiers, um, a lot of the players did use Snipe, and those players actually got really far into the tournament. Well, snipe is uh, interesting. Depends on the meta game, though. So here's just Animal Companion, and... Um, oh, Misha is actually amazing. Yeah, it's certainly the best trap, I would say, but we do see a kill command. You can uh, do you risk do you risk uh, animal companion to maybe buff your minions? Not really. Like you you will still have to yeah to take damage there. So here's the problem. Um, because RDU has a snake trap on his side of the board, it's gonna be um, tides of time. It's up to tides of time to actually race his opponent down oh, wow. and never attack minions, but. As I just as I say that, there's a unleash the hounds in his hand. So if yeah. he goes something like eagle horn bow, and web spinner here into knife juggler unleash, that could change the game entirely. Yeah, that unleash the hounds was key because with the single snake trap, already you had an advantage with uh, with all those minions. But right now, tides has the means to counter that, especially after losing explosive trap before. Yeah. Um, so there's two options here. You can attack face if you think your opponent has explosive trap. Or you can just hold and not attack anything if you think this trap is snake trap. Um, you can kind of like hedge between the two, but this gives your opponent snakes this turn. And uh, it, you're going to take more damage to your own face, but you know you're going to have a really good turn next turn. Yeah. So do you think that Tides of Time was suspecting the snake trap here? He was probably going for like... Um... I'm sure he's seen the VODs of the previous game and he knows like the possibilities of what this is. Is it Leok? No. No, it's not. Misha. So uh, Leok would be plus five damage. Misha is probably the worst. Oh man, we're going to see Juggler into Unleash. Yeah, certainly not Captain's Parrot. Oh it's my god. Kind of Drake. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's no way this volcanic Drake is going to cost zero. No, no, it's fast. gonna it's gonna cost like negative three mana. Yeah, yeah, negative three. Insane. All right, so I guess you do unleash here before you get the rope. Knives and the dog spawning will take a lot of time. Yeah. Um, I wonder what our what tides of time is thinking right now. Hmm. It's like, oh snap! I played the golden juggler instead of the normal one. That was a mistake. Okay, yeah, that actually does make a lot of sense. Uh, attacking before he goes for the unleash just maximizes um, the knife hits. Going yeah, true. Him. That was actually pretty smart. Alright, Monk, dogs and knives, dogs and knives. Nothing going oh. in the face. Oh, okay. You know, actually, you know what's funny is that if all the knives went to face, um, then the Volcanic Drake wouldn't have been able to have been played because yeah, not six creatures would have died. So this was actually the best result for Tides of Time. True. He has all the dogs. There's nothing to counter this. Just a small silence and pilot the shredder. And right now, how much damage is there on board? That's 13 points of damage. And that's plus five. That's 18. Oh man. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. Well, yeah. Oh my pilot the shredder can be ugly. So Oh you my took... god, I don't even know what to say to this. Well, you can only smile sheepishly. <laughs> On fire, Dipsh. That was, that was a wolf in sheep skin, man.
it just exploded, so... Yeah, even though RDU got the explosive sheep, uh, I don't think it's still enough. He needed an uh, unstable ghoul here. Yeah, I, I certainly agree. Even though RDU has an ultimate weapon of double Lepernome, the best possible hand you can have in Hearthstone, it may still be not enough. Isn't the best possible hand double Lepernome plus the, uh, the, the, the guy that spawned Lepernomes? Nope. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thermoplug. Yeah. Alright, so Tides of Time is going to take game number four and Test Series as well, winning 3 2 1 versus RDU, eliminating him from the tournament. Again, with this crazy deck lineup. Monk, what is happening? How is he doing this? It's pretty awesome. I mean, it's really interesting that the players that are bringing, I guess, the most interesting decks are making it to the semifinals. Of course, we had Tide to Time. We also had Hyped, who brought kind of a dragon warrior. So I yeah. guess the player, like the more dragons you play, the better you'll do in this tournament is the lesson. I love it. I love it. It's like right now uh, we will have Tides waiting for his next opponent. And the next match after this will be Strife Crow versus Trump. So either Strife Crow or Trump are going to face Tides of Time in a top four. But uh, we are not going to show it now. We are going to show it after a short break. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to be back soon.